Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi, and today we're going to optimize minimum spends for 2018. But first, if you are new here, we're all about how to maximize the value of our credit cards, so how to get the most cash back, and also how to travel for free. If that sounds interesting, then subscribe to our channel, but let's get started. And obviously, you can do this throughout the year. You don't really need to do it at the beginning of the year, but I think now is a pretty good time to look at it and to kind of plan ahead. The main things we're going to talk about are how to time things, which cards you might want to get, as well as the major events that you probably have or you might have in 2018. In terms of timing things, let's say if you want to do a vacation in the end of January, you can't really hit minimum spends to do that free trip. The main reason being that in most cases, you have to wait to get the card, you have to do the spend, you have to wait for it to post, and then you have to wait for the bonus to post. And again, depending on the card, depending on the bonus, you might actually have to wait one or two statements from when you finish the minimum spend in order to get those points. And once you even have those points, you still have to book the trip. And again, typically last minute trips are kind of harder to book depending on what you're looking to do. So you do want to leave some time. My recommendation is that if you want to do a trip during a specific time, that you kind of give it at least two to four months in order to get the card, hit the minimum spend, and to plan the trip. Obviously, the earlier the better, just because the more time you have, the easier it is to book and to find availability, especially if it is something that is a bit harder and something like a sweet spot redemption. The next thing is which card you should get. And again, I think a lot of that depends on your status, so how many cards you recently had. If you do kind of want a bit more advice around that and to kind of plan through the trip, I'd recommend filling out a questionnaire on our site. That way I can kind of help you out with it. The main idea though is that if you are under 524, that you go after those cards first. And again, there's a lot of different cards that are under that, so you might want to kind of prioritize different ones depending on your different status and also what you want to do in terms of a trip. Once you pass the 524 status mark, you have a lot of different options. So the ones that I would strongly recommend considering are typically the Chase Hyatt card as well as the Chase IHG card. The main reason being that they're good keeper cards that add a ton of value. So yes, they are also Chase cards, so that's kind of ironic, but they're not affected by Chase 524, meaning that it makes sense to get it afterwards. Specifically for this year, I think the MX SPG card as well as the SPG business card are really worth looking into just because they might not be here by the end of the year. We really don't know. There's a lot of speculation and there's also stuff that I've heard that I can't really talk about. To me at least, the SPG card as well as the Ritz card are the cards that are kind of endangered if you want to look at it that way. With most other cards, you're they're not really going away. Nothing bad is really happening. After that, it's pretty much dealer's choice. So if you are in Atlanta and you are in a Delta hub, then it probably makes sense to get the Delta Gold card or the Delta Platinum card, but it really depends on you and the trip you want to take. For the most part, this is all stuff I've covered before, so if you are someone who's watched a lot of the videos, then you probably already kind of have a plan. If you are someone who is still a bit confused about all this, I'd recommend either watching other videos that we have or again, filling out the questionnaire and I'll kind of walk you through it all. Now that you know when you need to apply for the card, as well as what cards you need for your vacation, so ideally a free vacation for at least hotels and your flights, the next thing we need to look at is major milestones where you're going to have significant spend in order to optimize your minimum spend. Depending on the state that you're in, one really big one that either passed already or is coming up is going to be health insurance. So again, if you do want to buy it, if it makes sense for you, and if work doesn't pay for it for you, then obviously now is going to be a good time to get a card just because you have a major expense coming up. In California, for example, I think you have until January 31st in order to enroll. And again, it just really depends on you whether it makes sense. If you're someone who owns a house, then you might want to look into using your credit card in order to pay your property taxes. So I know again in California that the second installment is due on February 1st, and depending on your state, it might be different, so I'd recommend looking it up. Also in February is Valentine's Day, and again, I think it really depends on you. I'm not really the type of person to spend a lot of money with a lot of different gestures, but if you are, if you are doing something special and maybe spending 500, 1,000, or a few thousand dollars, then it makes sense to get a card in order to hit minimum spend. Moving on to March, if you are a student, then this is a pretty good opportunity to just hit a lot of minimum spend, especially if you're looking to travel during spring break. 
I've had a ton of people email me telling me that they're doing a trip during spring break and they are basically convincing their friends to pay them back for the trip. So this one person is going to be paying for four or six other people for all the expenses. Even if you just do this for hotels, you can get a lot of value from it. Flights sometimes get kind of weird, but again, I guess it really just depends on your friend group and how the dynamics work. On a similar note, this is a pretty good way to turn points that are less liquid into cash. So let's say you have a ton of Hyatt points or IXG points and you're like, oh yes, I can redeem it for a really nice hotel, but I am not going to really do that because I don't care that much about it because I would rather have the cash. So again, let's say the going rate for something was $500 a night and you're splitting it between four people. I don't think it's unreasonable to ask each person, and obviously your cut is 125 as well, to basically pay their portion because they would have otherwise paid the rate anyways. And for you, you're using your points, so you're getting rid of these points that are not really that liquid, and you're getting a ton of value from it, plus you're still getting that vacation. Moving on, we have Mother's Day as well as Father's Day. So for me, again, I really don't spend that much money during those periods, but for you, it might make a lot of sense. 4th of July is pretty much the same idea as spring break, especially if you're looking to travel anywhere. And otherwise, for the most part, it's the same strategy that you're going to have throughout most of the summer, especially if you are someone who does a lot of barbecues or group meetings. A really good excuse to be the person who buys all of the food is if you have a Costco membership. So obviously you need to do the math to see whether that makes sense. But again, if you get a Discover card and you buy a ton of gift cards, or again, maybe if you're just hitting minimum spend on a Visa card, it works out pretty well. Towards the end of summer, we have Labor Day, so again, same idea. And then again, if you're a student, you would look into your tuition as well as your textbooks as good ways to hit minimum spend. For tuition and other fees, it does depend on your school, but again, if you can, why not? In October, we have Halloween, so if you're throwing a party and you're buying a ton of alcohol, Costco plus minimum spend. For November, we have Thanksgiving, so if you're doing any traveling and you're paying it anyways, or at this point, maybe you're doing this for free. So maybe you already hit minimum spend for the previous months in order to fly for free during Thanksgiving. Finally, in December, we have Christmas as well as New Year's. So again, traveling as well as parties and family dinners. So you do see a lot of similar themes throughout the year. You're just kind of finding these occasions ideally where you're not even spending your own money. So hopefully you're the person who's paying for stuff and you have reliable people who are paying you back. For the most part, all of this is pretty straightforward. I think the main idea here is that you do want to plan it out. So again, I've had people who kind of email me or do a questionnaire saying that they have an expense coming up in a few days for a really big charge. And again, that's kind of really hard to plan around. And similarly, if they are trying to do a trip, they're like, oh, I want to do this free trip in one month or two months. You can't really plan that shortly because I guess you can, but it's still hard. If you don't have the points, it's very hard. If you do have the points, I guess it's just looking into the options that you have and finding the cheapest one. That was just an earthquake. So I hope that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is, is there any event that I missed throughout the year? Or is there any specific event that you're looking forward to? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And if you know anyone else who benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share this video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.